I would like that you open up enough to understand that everything in the universe is like I gave an example. If you are, if you, an, a, a writer writes a book. I have said this example before. A writer has written a book, and it's got it's a great book. It's got many different characters in it. They all are different. They all play a different role. And some are really nasty and horrible and vicious, and some are wonderful and kind and loving and sociable. And they're all so many, they're so diverse. And everything in the book, the good guys, the bad guys, the boring guys, the exciting people, the wonderful things, the acts, everything in the book, although they seem so different in character, all come out of the same pen of the same one author is writing them. No character in the book can say, Listen, guys, we don't like this story, but shh, don't let the author know. <laughs> we are not going to show up in the next chapter. We are going to protest. We want things to be different. Okay. If that's in the book, it's by the author's creativity. It's a way of looking, you know, just to show that nothing, there's no one living, hiding from God. That's his also his writing, his writing in this book. In the book of creation, on every level of the manifest world, of the physical and the non physical realm, of any part of the universe, is penned by God, meaning everything. Is manifestation. If you understand that, then it will save you from really the effects of delusion, because you just kind of know, God knows. If you know that, then you will realize you can never really be lost. And when you realize you can never really be lost, your salvation is such a hand. The highest knowledge really is to see that. Nothing exists in your world independent of your consciousness. You are the witness of everything that is arising. Even if you think it is happening over there to these people, it is still in your consciousness. It is appearing. If you realise that whatever manifests through the mind and the senses are phenomenal, meaning that they have no independent or lasting existence, their only appearances, their only effects in consciousness, and the weakness of them is apart from them, and that weakness is yourself. That is not theoretical. It must become obvious. And when it becomes obvious, it is like these things will not then trap you. For a while, your life on, on its personal level of manifestation may still feel, oh, but why did this still happen and so on? But at some point you're gonna see everything that arises in you is witnessed in you. When you realize that the weakness is not a person, the person is witnessed. And what is witnessing you? It cannot be said. You can say it's consciousness or whatever, but you come to see it must be me, but not the personal me. You see? So the most important character is this which vibrates in the in the identity of I. You have to take the I beyond the limitations of a personal identity into like the um, uninvolved weakness. And the uninvolved weakness, you'll come to see that it's not an entity, it's like it's consciousness. I say this because consciousness is at the root. If everything is lost or everything is found, it does not make any difference to consciousness. It's pure consciousness. When you say I am, the real significance is consciousness or the sense of beingness. That's an intuition that doesn't belong, is not associated with anything. 
is beyond the concepts of parents and friends and religion and last year and next year and heaven and hell and all of these things and Muslim and Hindu and Christian and all of these things. It has no it has no none of these things is beyond it's pure, pure, unpolluted presence of God. One day you'll come to see that only God exists. There is no such thing as independent, separate persons. Only God exists. So what does it mean? All these forms will disappear? No. The belief in their separateness will disappear. Pure consciousness doesn't mean there is no thought. No, it means that they may arise, but they are ineffective against the purity of consciousness. Meaning that you have transcended the need to be different from this and that. You have transcended. So your beingness is returning to its original God nature. The realization of the self is not like an accumulated knowledge, like you are some human encyclopedia of knowledge. Actually, you become totally empty. Because the knowledge of the world and human beings is completely useless to the divine. Only love is there. Jai. When I say there, I really mean here. Okay? We use word there. There is no there. You have to drop the T. Everything is here. There means mind. Knowledge manifests spontaneously. It is not that you have saved up knowledge. Saved up knowledge is always late. Actually, the sage and so on, they know nothing at all. Because they see to know something is limitation. They just are, like you just are. <laughs> they are not interested in becoming. They are not even interested in being. It just is. But it is not appealing to the egoic mind. The egoic mind is a journey that has to happen, and it is also in God's book. He writes the book. The souls have to... There are all these individual souls. Individual souls don't exist, actually. It is all in God's dream book. There is only God. And God is not an entity. He is the totality of all there is and can ever be. <laughs>